Hello, everybody. Welcome to a special Thursday Danny Mullen stream. We can't, Austin, ignore the title of this video much longer, can we? I don't think we can, because I want to hear this story, too. This story exists in written form. It's in one of my books, Home, which makes it sound fictional, but it is not fictional. And I think we're just going to have to launch into it here. I might have told it once on a Patreon live, but other than that, I think this is fresh material. It's one of the most legendary things I've ever pulled. So without further ado, I'm going to take a sip of cola. Focus in and tell it. My post-college summer, 2013, we talked a live human girl, not talked into, a live human girl more or less volunteered to eat the jizz of myself, a guy named Bladewing, Tor Tarantula, who you guys have heard about on this channel, and this other kid, Neb. It was the four of us. She ate our jizz after it had been fried up and served to her on a ceramic plate. We didn't pay her either. And she did it while sober as a fucking red-tailed hawk. And looking back on that summer, it's really not that big of a surprise that something like that happened. It was a very special summer, that post-college summer. And I think a lot of you watching are going to be able to dig this. My audience is a lot of 20s and 30s. That's the main age bracket there. Something happens, Austin, and your ass wouldn't know because you never did, nor ever will you go to college. You I went for a year and a half and then dropped out. You got to go to two years. Two years is when you can say you're officially a college failure. In one and a half years, don't even mention it. Yeah, it was, it was hardly even an attempt at college. Yeah, you insult learned men by bringing that up right now. It's a special time, though, the summer after you graduate college. And special not in a good way. It is like a stock market crash in your ability to get pussy. It's a crash of your pussy stock. When you're in college, you got the world in front of you, my friend. You could flap your gums at chicks. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go to Wall Street and start my career. I'm moving to Dallas, and I'm going to get into the real estate market. Yeah, my uncle's down there. He, he runs shit down. Once you graduate, though, the smoke and the mirrors and the BS, it drifts away. And you're left with you and your stinky carcass and your smelly lies. Or, I mean, if you're on top of your shit, maybe you actually did secure internships when you were in college and you really have gone on to accomplish things and you're already working in New York or in Dallas by the time you graduate. Not this guy and not a lot of other college kids. You graduate, so all the hopes and dreams and the, the potential that women see in you is gone and you haven't yet developed your future career. You're not making money. You don't have any status. That comes in your late 20s and 30s if you're working hard. You're down in the dip. You're in the 2008 stock market crash. That's where your status is in the eyes of women. I put it like this. There's a Beatles song off the second half of Abbey Road. It goes, out of college, money spent. See no future, pay no rent. All the money's gone, no place to go. All that magic feeling, no place to go. I describe it that summer. I described myself as having that magic feeling. Out of college, no place to go. That was me. And the magic feeling did some weird shit to me that summer. It made me start skateboarding again. I had no job, no prospects. I was trying to get the writing thing underway, but nobody respected that. I would just skateboard around, do kickflips, ollie over cardboard boxes in my driveway. And then my parents would drive home from work in the afternoons, and I'd stand there and wave at them. It was like I'd taken a time machine back to fourth grade. That's one thing that was happening. For two, I was living at home, but I still had the sex drive of a bull moose, so I was trying to fuck chicks in my parents' house. Austin, have you ever tried to pull that off? Uh, one time my mom walked in on me fucking a chick in my mom's house, so that was... Well, your mom's no stranger to fucking, so she probably wasn't even that mad. For sure. If you guys don't watch the podcast, there's a running gag going because Austin's mom used to hang out with the band members of Motley Crue. 
So he's pretty sure Nikki Six slipped it to her in the 80s, and we ride him on that a lot. Was she More than just the Motley Crew. She was hanging out with White Snake too? Poison and mm-hmm. Guns N' Roses. I think she dated the drummer at one point. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I heard Duff McKagan. He was rumored to be packing. He probably took her into the back parking lot of the Rainbow and bent her over too. That was her favorite spot to hang out. Your mom has seen a lot of things, Austin. How'd she react to you fucking in the room when you walked when she walked in? Uh, I'm br- so she she I left the shower on as like a uh, a, a sound tactic. mask. Yeah, and she noticed I wasn't in the shower, and this was not too long after my brother had died while taking a shower. So my mom was like wondering why I hadn't got in there, and my room was locked. <sighs> And she body checked the door open and just slammed open the door and I'm on top of the chick and it was a whole ordeal. She was pretty angry. I mean, I think I was grounded. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Way to bring down this entire podcast telling us your brother died. Thank you for that, Austin. Sorry, it's just part of my tragic backstory. That's I guess. fine. I brought a girl home that summer one time and I was shit faced drunk. The girl picked me up and I tried to bang her in my room, which is about thirty horizontal feet from my parents' room, wooden doors, silent as the bottom of the ocean out there where I'm from, Orangevale, my hometown. And my mom's a famously light sleeper, too. It wasn't as dramatic as Austin's. Thanks for upstaging me, buddy. But my mom definitely mentioned it at breakfast the next morning. So all of that is the backdrop of the cum omelet. My one real responsibility that summer... The one thing I had to stay on top of other than beating off and skateboarding and writing my little stories was watering the plants. And that's where we begin our tale. My dad's got a finger in my chest and make sure you get all those potted plants hanging over the front door. They've been a little dry lately. I just give them the, uh uh-huh. Yeah, dad. And the grapes. Let's don't forget about those grapes. So 15 minutes later, I'm out watering the lawn, perhaps even watering the grapes. And I hear it. A feminine laugh coming from Tor Tarantula, my neighbor's house. I drop the hose. I cut a zigzag stealth pattern up to his vegetable garden. And I pop up like the the dude in Home Improvement. Tim Allen. Look over the fence. And I see him. Tor Tarantula, Blade Wing, Neb, and the back of this girl. Now in Orangevale, California... A pre-menopausal woman hardly existed. It was rare. And when you saw it, you had to take your shot. You didn't know when you would get one again. It was rough times back then, Austin. So I loop around through the door of the vegetable garden, start walking over and approach. Tor spots me. Hey, Danny, come drink a beer. Blade wing this other guy. Oh, hey, Danny, come fucking smoke. And I catch this girl's profile. Her body profile and her face profile. And what strikes me? Panic. Why panic, Austin? Because from afar, she looked heartbreakingly hot. I'm going to ask you right now, Austin, because I can't see the audience's responses. So you're my only sounding board. Can you relate to me when I say that a lot of times a really hot chick can completely fuck up your afternoon, your night, a trip to the grocery store, a trip to a coffee shop. Because instead of just hanging out with your buddies, cracking some jokes, having a few drinks, when there's a hot chick in the area, it suddenly becomes all hands on deck. Definitely agree. 100%. It sucks. Because now, instead of just telling your lewd jokes and being a jerk-off, You got to be cool. You got to be cool with a capital C. And the way I've put this before, it's like the tip of your tongue is now something you got to pay very close attention to. You got to have a librarian in there making sure your grammar sounds good and you sound smart. You got to have the dude with the slick back hair and the leather jacket in there also to make sure you sound real cool. You got to have the bull dyke with the, with the flat top and the cargo shorts to make sure you don't say anything sexist or offensive. You don't want to put the knife into your chances of getting any poon. 
And it sucks, too, because you're at the grocery store. You're trying to just fucking buy some apricots or do something over in the produce section. And you see a hot chick come into the area. And then suddenly you're like, brains, come on, pussy. Go talk to her. Go get her number. You might never get a chance to fuck a girl who looks like this again. And you know it's lies. And you know it's an illusion. But it throws off your focus. It's nice now that I have a girlfriend because I can give myself an out and be like, oh, yeah, you don't have to be stressed and go up and talk to these bitches anymore. But in the past, it can fuck up an afternoon. So... It was to my dread that I approached the table, sat down, and saw this girl. Beautiful little face. Cute cheekbones, upturned nose, great teeth, and tits, Austin. Look at me, Austin. You don't need to keep looking at the screen every now and then. I'm telling you about a girl's tits. You're right. That's your favorite thing. I'll focus on the tits. Oh, now I lost momentum. I don't even remember what the tits were like. I think they're in the thumbnail. That might be a generic chick, actually. They were nice tits, though. And I lost it right then because this was still when I was coming out of college, when I was a big puss hound douchebag. I made up my mind. This afternoon, I am going to try to fuck this chick. So what does my brain do? It deploys my social rover. I got to figure out who she is, who she's fucking if she's available. So I start asking these guys, what's the deal? What's been going on? Blade Wing tells me he's been camping. I ask, how was that? He says, and I'll fucking always remember this. It was great, man. I woke up at 6 a.m., hiked to the top of a mountain, and jerked off into the sunrise. This kid, Blade Wing, he was a real hippie dude. So was Tor Tarantula. That's how they got to know each other and become friends. And so I, my eyes flipped to the girl like, okay, how was she taking this? Is, this seems like an, an alarming thing to unload on her. She doesn't even react negatively. And what's more, she says... I always wonder about things like that because I watch porn where people are fucking in public and I got to wonder, is that illegal? Can they get arrested? Do, 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 do. My heart starts beating. This girl watches fucking porn. I'm not used to this breed. I was hanging around a lot of ditzy sorority girls at UCLA. And I'm sure they talked about that shit amongst themselves. I'm sure they screened it in the Alpha Phi House overhead projector. But they didn't talk about it so openly. Then they keep talking about it. Blade Wing the Risen went to UC Santa Barbara at the time. He's like, yeah, people fuck on the beach at UC Santa Barbara. It's not a big deal. And uh, this girl, she says, yeah, I, I always wonder about the nature stuff. Because when they clear out a 7-Eleven or a Target in a Japanese pornography and they start fucking, clearly they shut the place down and they bring in actors and that's not real. But I don't understand it. What? The lawsuits, the blah, blah, the permits, they must be a bitch to secure. So I start fucking freaking out, and I blurt. I remember blurting this. Have you guys ever seen the porn with the cum omelet? I just wanted to have something to say. It's where there's a chef, and the girl eats a bunch of dudes' jizz. Silence swept the table. The girl who hadn't been all that warm to me, Austin, the entire time, shoots daggers from me out of her eyeballs. Neb's quiet, Blade Wing the Risen's quiet, Tor Tarantula doesn't have anything to say. And then she says, the cum omelet, what the fuck is that? And I just think, oh God, what can I do? I change the subject here. Where's the shovel? I need to dig my way out of this. And I say, oh yeah, yeah, forget about it. She says, no, no, what, what the hell's the cum omelet? That sounds really interesting. Everybody's cued in on me. I know there's no getting out of it. So, I dig in, and I deliver... The following speech. We'll call it the cum omelet speech. This, my friends, is what the cum omelet is. This was something, my first unicorn, my first sexual unicorn was the Eiffel Tower. That's what I always wanted to do. You and your buddy have a girl bent over between you. She's blowing one of you and the other guy's banging her from behind. The next sexual unicorn We'll upgrade it. It was a sexual dragon. This was really special to me for a lot of years, Austin. So don't snigger behind the camera. The cum omelet. I'm going to give you a rundown of a typical porn cum omelet video. There's the starlet in quotes. And to start, she walks over to this little kitchenette they got set up on the, on the sound stage or wherever the fuck they are in the San Fernando Valley. She's appraising all the cooking equipment, the frying pan, the stove, the spatula, and it's so over the top. She's got her finger in her mouth. Oh, wow, this is really nice equipment, much better than my apartment. And it's the director trying to convince you that she's into this. 
that mass cum consumption is one of her hobbies here. Which, of course, it's not. This is a pill-addicted chick who's three months behind on her rent. But my favorite part of this... Well, I got two favorite parts. One is the chef. They have a dude there who's got his arms crossed. He's in an apron. He's got the white fluffy hat. He's got a cheap gold Casio over his left wrist. And he's got hairy forearms. Just this big slob of a man. He's the chef. And then they pan across the room, Austin. And there are a sea of the most ragged-looking men you've ever seen. The kind of guys you'd call upon if you had to staff a pirate ship in the year 1729. That's who you're looking at. It's like trucker dudes, biker dudes, black guys, young studs, men who look like they've been trapping beavers in the Pacific Northwest for the last couple of years. That's the selection of people we have. And the best thing, too, is that some of them have face paint. Some of them are dressed up in devil costumes. I don't know if you caught the Tour de France this year, but they dress up in similarly festive outfits for most of these come omelet videos. You get the impression they showed up like three hours early and tailgated the parking lot. Like they got fucking hammered before they did this. There's a hard cut, and then all of a sudden, the starlet's down on her knees. She's got a big measuring cup. And a dude just has a hard... It's not even a dude yet. There's a disembodied hard dick just floating next to her right cheek. And you go, oh, there's a hard penis. I don't know where that came from. The guy jizzes all over... Oh, God. And this is repulsive. Me me burping into the microphone here. I'm sorry, guys. I switched to Coke. Coffee no longer has any effect on me. And the sugar has been getting me real motivated when I'm out filming or when I'm podcasting. The jizz hits her right around the left. I was going to say, where was I? Oh, yeah, the jizz hitting the girl on the lips and teeth. The jizz hits the girl on the lips and teeth. And then she spits it down into her measuring cup. Pretty soon, guys coming in from the left and the right. It's like a Super Mario level. Fucking dude flies on the screen. My cum and my penis shoots. He flies out of the screen. Another guy comes in. Flies off the screen again. The level of cum in the measuring cup is moving steadily to the north. Okay, it's filling up. And my favorite thing, I'll say this till the day I die, Austin, about these videos, is you see this trend which is so rare in porn. Normal cock size. You see small dicks. One where the guy can only jerk off with his index finger and his thumb. You see big dicks, yeah, but mostly... It's just a a parade of penises that look more like a roll of quarters or lifesavers versus a banana or an eggplant. Yeah, they're not quite as big as yours, Austin. I know more you're more on the banana eggplant side of the equation. That's another running gag from our podcast is that Austin will say with his hand on a stack of Bibles that his penis is eight and a half inches. And I, with my hand held to Jesus, will deny this because I've seen it limp and it does not look like it gets that big. I'll provide some sort of evidence. That'd be nice. You could even do it on this live. We're going to be here for a while. There's a measuring tape right over there on the floor. We used it to measure Iggy's penis not a month ago. Normal cock sizes. You even see black dudes with penises that your penis could go out and grab a beer with. And if that's not the definition of unity and heartwarmingness, I'm not sure what is. It was for me. So 10-minute chunks are falling off your fucking computer. It's going real smooth. Eventually, the measuring cup is full. The feast has begun. Or not quite. Because she ain't going to eat that shit raw. That's bad for you. You got to cook it up. You don't go to a poultry farm and just take a hatchet to a chicken's neck and tear out a piece of raw flesh now, do you, Austin? You got to prepare it. It's the same with jizz. They take it over. And the chef comes back into play. He holds it up. Simba Pride Rock style for everybody in the room to see. They cheer. They're very proud of their handiwork. A lot of the guys couldn't even come, I'm sure, because they, again, got drunk in the parking lot. So there's a little less jizz than you would expect given the presence in the room. He dumps it into the frying pan, puts the frying pan on low heat. That's key. I always watch low heat and cooks it up. Eventually, it doesn't turn into anything that they would serve in a high-quality French bistro, so it's not really an omelet, but it sort of does look like egg whites. And they bring it over to the starlet. They feed it to her. She tries to look like she's enjoying every last bite. And the chef, the best part, Austin, is the chef is standing there cross-armed behind her like, yes, this is my finest creation. 
I did multiple years in San Francisco in Michelin star restaurants. No dish have I yet been as proud of than this, though. That's his that's He conveys that just with his crossed arms and his shitty watch and his outfit. She eats it, and you can just see the pain in her eyes as she's doing it, Austin. But she keeps trying to smile and look up and assure the chef she loves it the whole time. And now we fade back into that bench where I was with Tor, Bladewing, Neb, and Emmeline. Silence. Silence. I'm still thinking I got to go finish watering the fucking garden. I'm, I'm done. This girl's never going to have sex with me now. She says, that's pretty funny, actually. I think, funny? She says, yeah. And I say, you don't think that was a little brutal? And she says, no. What, what, girls have to eat cum all the time. And I say, yeah. But usually it isn't ritualized with a guy with a frying pan and spatula and a dude dressed like the devil overseeing everything. That's not healthy. Freud would have something to say about that, as would the girl who was in the video's mom. But Emmeline persisted. I think it would be pretty fun. I think it would be a story to tell. Do, 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 do. My heart's back up. My heart's at the level of falling into a tiger exhibit at the zoo. That's how hard it's beating. A sudden change of cabin pressure in a plane. Do, 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 do. I start freaking out. My gears start turning. I say, well, I, I don't know. Star mathlete here. But there are four of us at the table, including you, or not including you, five of us total. I told you I wasn't a star mathlete. And I think Tor, we're at his house. His parents probably have a stove. Tor's locked in now, too. He says, yeah, they, they got a stove. Okay, so stove's not an issue. You want to go inside and do this thing? There's a moment of silence. The bird's chirping. It's August 2013. The sun's coming in through the trees. There's a lawnmower going. There's always a, when you live in the country, there's always a lawnmower somewhere. I don't care if you're the only person in six miles in any direction. There's always a fucking lawnmower. You'll hear it. She says, let's do it. And three seconds later, I'm up, charging in the Taurus house, looking for the adequate kitchen supplies. I get a frying pan, boom. I get a spatula, waha! I get an apron, too. You can see in the thumbnail, I got an apron on. The last thing I need is a measuring cup. I can't find it anywhere. I'm running out of patience, so what do I grab, Austin? I grab a Tide laundry detergent cap. And I go into the bathroom. I'm first up. I'm volunteering. I'm Neil Armstrong here. I'm the guy who hit Normandy Beach and took the first MG42 round in the face. I don't care. I lock out my legs, drop my drawers, get my bare ass on the edge of Tor's sink and start fucking jerking it dry. Especially back then, my cock is starting to run on fumes a little bit now. I feel it. I've had enough sex at this point in my life, and I have a girlfriend now, so I've been having a lot of unprotected sex. My dick is getting desensitized. It's becoming harder and harder for me to come on command. But back then, I almost had a challenge with my friend where I was going to come 11 times in one day. And I was, back then, quite positive I was going to pull it off. And I used to say that you could have done anything you wanted to try to prevent me from getting off. You could have... Dumped out three lines of cocaine. I could have taken them all. Motley crew size lines of cocaine. You understand, Austin? Yeah, I understand. The kind that you and your mom... No, not you. I guess you weren't born yet. Were you being carried in her belly yet? Not for a long time after this. <laughs> the size <laughs> lines that you... Oh, why do I keep saying you? Your mom and Vince Neil did in the bathroom of the rainbow. That's what I was trying to get out. You could give me those. You could take the... You could take a beagle, a live beagle, snap its neck, put it on my left thigh. You could put on a big fucking collection of Hitler's best speeches and broadcast them from various overhead projectors. I wonder if that uh, series of DVDs exists. Hitler's best speeches. That would be a pretty controversial. The, the best, maybe most infamous might be a title that you could sell them under. Best speeches. I think that would get pulled off the internet. All that, and I'd still be able to whip out my dick and come and the time it makes an average person, and the time it takes an average person to walk out and get the mail. Invincible. So I'm pulling it. I think I'd already jerked off a couple times that day. I shoot in the cup. I'm very happy. I go back out. I drop it on the table. 
Tor Tarantula goes in. Bing! Lightning speed, comes back, drops it off. I was actually a little bitter that he was able to do it so quick. I take pride, took pride in my ability to come fast. Next, Neb goes in. And this dude, Neb, I think he might be a junkie now. He was the drummer in Tor Tarantula's reggae band. He didn't say a word this entire afternoon. He lived off his mom's wealth. His mom owned a hair salon. And I haven't spoken to him or seen him. And I, I think he was having problems with narcotics and pills when I knew him. So I'm sure he's dead now. And uh, the narcotics and pills problems, that probably explained why it took him like 15 minutes to come in the cup. But eventually he brings it out too. Then Bladewing gets up, heads for the house. But he turns before he goes and he says, oh, Emmeline, come along with me. And she gets up like a well-trained dog and follows him. And I was actually mad because my dirtbag priorities had come to the fore. Now it was more important for me to pull off the cum omelet so I could brag to all my friends than to actually have sex with this girl. I had my priorities straight. But when Bladewing took her into the fucking house, all of a sudden... I was a jealous lover type again. Charles Darwin was going nuts in me. There was a gorilla and a tiger roaring. I wanted that fucking pussy. So I tell fucking Tor Tarantula, I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Where, why does he get her? If I would have known blowjobs were on the menu, I would have opted in. He says, they're dating, dude. They're fucking dating. I say, dating? She's about to eat all of our cum. And he goes, oh, I, I mean, uh, they fuck sometimes. Yeah. They sometimes fuck. So I think, well, great. That would have been a nice thing to uh, partake in. And if they sometimes fuck and she eats jizz, it's probably just some hippie commune style relationship and there's room for more penis. But you got to be grateful, Austin. That's what I've learned recently. And that's what I've been practicing a lot. Gratitude. It's been making my videos better. My performance is better. My writing better. I've been having a better time. I was grateful on that August afternoon that we were going to pull the cum omelet so I was no longer bitter after that brief outburst. And pretty soon, after Emmeline had sucked off Blade Wing and all four of our jizz was circulating in that tide cap, it was time for the feast to begin. We descended on the kitchen. We busted out the fucking olive oil. We pulled out a bunch of fucking beers. We wanted to make this festive. We wanted to really make it over the top. But once we dumped the shit the jizz into the frying pan and started letting it go. The problem was it wasn't working like it was in all the videos. I did the low heat thing. I spread it out just the same as the chef, AKA my hero does in all the videos. It was just liquefying in the olive oil. It was just fucking blending in with that. It just looked like fucking snot. And so uh, I was starting to panic a little bit. I was like, there, what are we going to do? And Tor Tarantula says, I don't know. Really pour it into a shot glass. We make her take a shot of our jizz. And I say, no, Tor, that is blasphemy. I've idolized the people in these videos. I've laughed with a lot of friends at the people in these videos for a long time. I'm going to do them the respect of emulating the cum omelet in the right way. So what do we settle on? Bisquick. We decide to make this thing into a pancake because that's sort of in the same spirit as an omelet. We mix it in there. It ends up even looking shittier than it had when it was just olive oil. <sighs> but we got to move fast because it was evaporating in the pan, essentially. It was getting smaller and smaller. We bisquick it. We dump it onto a piece of toast, and we give it to Emmeline. She eats it. That picture in the thumbnail, that's actually her eating it, actually. That's from the back of my book, I remember now. There's pictures of me, Bladewing, Tor all hanging out, fucking she's snacking down on it, and we're having a great time, but it isn't long before I realize I've got important work to do. I say bye to everybody. I thank Emmeline for her service. I go outside. I text a couple of my buddies. In my books, I call this is one of my buddies, Tim, and one of my buddies, Chris. Their code names in the book were Consonant Tift and Jacob and Taylor. I text both of them, hey, fuckers. Look what I just pulled off. Send him a picture of the cum omelet. And these were guys, we would always compete with each other. Be like, hey man, I fucked a girl last night, at least 60 pounds overweight. What do you got to say to that? And they'd be like, oh shit, that is pretty impressive. 
A month later, you get a text. Hey, man, I just fucked a girl in the ass last night and she shit all over my dick. But I didn't stop. I went to my laundry hamper, got a long Nike sock, wiped it off, and then kept going. And then you go, fuck. And I didn't have much to retaliate with until I had my cum omelet. The pictures were deployed, and I felt a whole new level of euphoria. But I got back to my house, walked across the street, and what did I find? My dad, on the lawn, looking at the hose, which has created a small lake right on his front lawn. And he says, hey, what the fuck? What about my plants? And he was very upset. And I couldn't explain where I'd been all afternoon. That's the come omelet story. That's the come omelet story.